Lab, everybody. This is Terry at the Johnson Command Center. If you recall a few videos ago, I replaced a high voltage filter capacitor in a Johnson Viking 2. The one that was installed was actually leaking oil. The oil in these old 8 microfarad caps is highly corrosive and it's also very dangerous for human contact. Okay, it's got PCBs in it. You need to read up on that. It's not a good deal, right? So these caps have been in here for, you know, 60 years. And they're going to start corroding and leaking and causing problems. But what the real problem is, is there's no replacement available. So I came up with these nice little filter cap assemblies, okay? This is built on a 1990s turret board made by RJ, which was a military supplier. I found a surplus of them and I built these nice little modules. So now you can get rid of old C9, the leaking tin can, and put in the new filter module. Okay, so this guy comes out, this guy goes in its place. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to accomplish that task. Yes, I am building these, they'll soon be on my website but the supply is going to be limited and they're not going to be cheap. Here we go. All right, what we're going to do in this video is replace this old oil filled filter cap with the new D lab little module that's built on the RJ turret board. So first thing you obviously need to do is put a meter on the old cap and make sure that it is discharged. Because under normal operation, there's about 750 volts on this guy, okay? If you take a look, there's a red lead that goes up to one of the 5R4 rectifiers. This black lead goes up to the junction of the little current shunts, okay? So your new module will install the same way. Black lead is going to go here between the shunts. Positive will go to the 5R4 rectifier. You can see if you install this board down in its new position, the existing leads won't make it. You could cut these off and extend them if you don't want to interrupt these connections, or you can just go ahead and desolder and install the new leads. So first thing I need to do is get this one out. Then we're going to drill two holes for the bracket of the new cap assembly. So we've got the hardware loose, so it's nice that uh, Johnson used these little ring terminals, so those will pop right off. The thing that you may discover is getting to the hardware that holds this cap on is a little bit difficult. This one is easily accessible, this guy back here is not. So first off, you want to try to pop this guy, there we go, <laughs> out of the way. And then you can work on getting the old bracket out, okay? And I'm going to drill two holes here and we'll get the new one mounted up and swing the wiring into place. Now you're going to take your new filter cap assembly, put him in the area in which you'd like to mount it, I just pretty much center it up. Okay, you can't use the old brackets. Sorry, it's just the way it is. So, mark your two little holes, and you're going to use 4 4D hardware to mount the module right there. So, there's plenty of room to get your drill in there. I've center punched my two holes, and then I use a little center drill, and that will also provide the right clearance for the 440 screws. There's my two mounting holes. I use these 440 3 8 screws. You're just going to come in through the bottom, like that. Set your module in place. And then I got these nifty little 440 nuts that have built-in lock washers.
So the screw heads are trapped between the outside cabinet and the chassis so it's almost impossible to get a screwdriver on there. So I use a little quarter inch wrench and just tighten them up. Also make sure that you clean up all the little metal shavings from drilling and other contamination that you see in this area. You sure don't want this high voltage to get out of hand. So now we have reached the critical portion of the task and that is connecting the wiring from our new module up to its proper locations in the Viking 2. Make absolutely sure that the positive lead is going to that 5R4 and the negative lead is going up here between the two little black current shunts. If you reverse this and you fire up your transmitter I guarantee you you're going to have a giant confetti generator. So use caution and when you're done we're also going to measure it make sure there's no shorts. I want to start with a positive lead. Be careful working around this coax because you really don't want to melt the insulation. And you see they just had that poked through so it should be pretty easy to install loot the lead. I'm going to take a little bit of uh, wick and see if I can open up one of the holes on this terminal. So I got my positive wire in place on the 5R4 terminal. That one's good to go. Now to get the negative one off here. I believe it's just laying across these two yellow wires up here. Yep. That'll make installation of the black wire a little easier, won't it? There's remnants of a wire that used to go up to the filter cap, the old filter cap assembly. That was changed long ago in this Viking. Right, I'm going to do the same thing that they did on the negative line because I really don't want to interrupt these current shunts or the wiring. You'll find if you ever have to solder in those current shunts See there? Pretty close to that one. You don't want that. Yeah, if you ever get in a situation where you have to wire in those current shunts, you really got to have some finesse because that material does not like to solder. I've had several Viking 2s that have came here and their plate currents intermittent or their modulation current is pegging out. It's usually bad connections on these two current shunts. So, you know, just use caution. Hopefully this is a one-time good deal, right? The old cap was in here for like 60 years. I can't guarantee you that these new caps will have that longevity. But they are a top-rated capacitor. These are the FNT caps rated at 500 volts apiece. So before you apply power, to this new capacitor board you want to make absolutely sure there's no shorts okay so this side of the bottom cap should go to ground that's going up through the shunts and then it makes its way to ground that's how they're measuring the current okay but this side the positive side should be open okay if you measure here and you see a short do not apply power to the transmitter because you've wired something incorrectly so as usual, look over your work, make sure everything's clean. Then we'll flip her down and apply power to the Viking 2. Here we go, checkout time. I'm using the D-Lab VFO 123 Palstar dummy load. And the Viking 2 is hooked up with a D104 so we can watch it modulate. There's my grid. 
go to plate, key it up, make sure we're dipped, look for output. Now this is my main Viking 2, hello 1, 2, hello 1, 2, 3. I've had this Viking 2 for over 20 years, so it's about time that it got a new filter cap installation. Alright, well that's all there is to it. It's about a 15 minute replacement job after you take off the million screws on the bottom cover. But when you get done, you can probably say, hey, my Johnson still works. Well, you could have fooled me. Figures.